Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Project Footballer episode 19. In this episode, you will notice that we had some technical issues with one of the microphones. We've taken measures that this never happens again, but we appreciate your patience and continue to support with Project Footballer. We hope you enjoy the episode. Hello, and welcome to Project Footballer episode 19. Today, we are doing things a little bit differently. Uh, we've gone out to our audience and we've asked you to give us your questions, things that you need help with with your children in football, whether it's academy football, grassroots football. And we're now going to be taking those questions and answering them at random. Um, our panel today um, are, is in myself, um, who's a, a Chelsea scout. We have Rob Ursel, who many of you all know now, and he's been on the last few episodes, ex-England futsal player. Marcelo, experienced coach and Tottenham scout, um, a new person to the Project Footballer family, and welcome Tim Grinwade. Um, so, so Tim has a, a, a child, well, one of his children, who is mm. one of the <laughs> top players, in my opinion, one of the top players in the country, an under thirteen player at Top Cat One Academy. Um, if one day, good willing, I have a child, he's going to be someone that I'm going to be speaking to. I speak to him all the time, already taking advice. So, yeah, we're really glad to have Tim with us today. And then, person who needs no introduction, Paul Merson. Um, yeah, well, I think it's a, it's a great panel. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be looking forward to getting into this. So, first question. I'm going to be pulling this one out. And we'll see who wants to answer this to start with. Do you think academies in England focus too much on dribbling? I think Paul had something off camera that is a good point. That is, what age are we talking about? Because that is obviously very broad, right? Um, now, when you are younger, I would suggest that it is very important for kids to be dribbling quite a lot because they're being familiar, becoming familiar with the ball. Um, however... Their football as a whole, as you grow up, becomes a team sport. You know, it's a team sport when you're young, but you know what I mean? You have a lot of 1v1s and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then as you grow, you have to uh, be an individual, but within a team sport. Do you know what I mean? So you have to learn various different parts of the game. And um, dribbling is just one aspect of it. Um, but in a time where you're trying to learn how to master the ball, well, I would say it is very important. I do agree it's really important, but I do think it's disproportionate, mm -hmm. the amount of emphasis placed on just dribbling. And like, it can't be that you get to under nines and you're not told you have to pass at this situation. Mm -hmm. Like, it can't, I don't think it can be that. It's, I think it, we're getting it wrong in that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, my past experiences of, of growing up and playing football is... I think when you dribble, you dribble with your head down. Now, you've got to be able to see the picture. I mean, for me, it's getting your head up and, and being able to see a pass. I understand dribblers, but we emphasise on dribble, dribble, dribble. But when it gets to 11 v 11, you'll never have more than two dribblers in a football team. So why are we always dribbling, dribbling, dribbling with the ball? You, you know, that's my that's my that's my thing. I, I mean, that's why I'm I'm skipping from from seven to seventeen or eighteen. I think, and that's where I think we struggle with with kids kicking onto another club. Is when they do get released, and, and kids do, of course they do. They get released. Uh, bundles of kids get released. They need to go into a team, but if they're an individual, no one's going to take that player. If you know what I mean, it's it's hard to go. And, you know, I think it's it's so easy at the moment to dribble, dribble, dribble because you're playing against kids who've got no interest in in, in defending. Mm -hmm. It's not their job. No one's interested in defending, especially it's, not as a team either. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's easy to dribble, mm -hmm. but when you get to a certain age and that kid you're playing against taught to be able to defend and get low and jockey and calm someone and just just hold them up till someone else gets back and start doubling up, then I don't see certain players being able to see the picture mm -hmm. when. You know, I, I see so many good dribblers and I think all you've got to do is literally pass the ball five yards and you'll be amazing, like amazing. Just with a five-yard ball. I'm not talking about hitting the ball 40 yards, just a five-yard ball because these these dribblers, they 
if you're good on the ball, they attract players. Yeah. They attract players. Greenish, so then you just got to like, you just got to play that ball off. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm, that's all I would say. If I could put it to you, Tim, mm -hmm. because yeah, your son, he is, yeah, and he's an outstanding player mm -hmm. playing up an age group. And sometimes he's even been involved two years above himself. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, but, but he's like the product of like the modern academy environment. Mm -hmm. And do you, what was he like when he was six and seven? Was he a player that enjoyed being on the ball and dribbled a lot? Mm, he did. Um, but in all fairness to him, he's a smart little kid. And what he was, what I'd say his superpower was and still is till now, is he finds a way. Like, so if you're coming against someone who is super huge and super fast, because he really does, like, he's a small, he's small, like, he's small, but he is technically very gifted. He plays fluently both feet um, to the point, arguably, he started to probably score more on his left than he has on his right. And um, he started off as a right footer as, as a youngster. We had a, we had an aim to be both footed fluidly by 10. Um, and he did by about eight. Um, but the, yeah, it, he, when he comes up against bigger people, sometimes it'll be around the corner. Sometimes it'll be, oh, I shake you up. I use Merce as a decoy and then I'll, I'll go this way. He's just very clever. And I think that's when the stars align and you, you have someone who has a great talent in, you know, having the ball at their feet and being dribbling with it and manipulating it in a way that is hard to um, work out for a, an opposing player. But then at the same time, having the intelligence to work out that, oh, Mercer's off. I'll just clip this through to him. Do you know what I mean? Job done. He's in. Goal. Do you know what I mean? And 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 I think, I, I think... There's a lot of emphasis on this whole, you know, is there too much dribbling? Do we need more passes? I've seen recently the whole thing about why don't we produce Kimmiches and, yeah. and, and the likes thereof. Um, but I think football ultimately, like, so I think Merce probably, I, I know we kind of maybe not, don't see eye to eye on this, Sean, but I think Merce was probably destined to be some kind of footballer. He had a mind for it. He saw things. Uh, I agree. It, 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 <laughs> I, I'm with you. I agree. I, I, if, you're talking about nature nurture. 100%. Like your, your thing there, look, I've never seen your kid play, but I know Jamie and Jamie's told me about right, your okay. boy. Now, you use, you, use, you use two words for all the dribbling and everything else and he's dribbled and he's mm -hmm. two-footed. The two words that stand out, bright, intelligent. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And they're, they're the two things. If it was, I, I'm, I'm a great, but some of it is nature and some and, and some of it is nurture. Absolutely. If it if it wasn't nature, yeah, every player would be exactly the same because we're all doing the same training. So it wouldn't. I don't think in football. I don't think one works without the other. I think you can't I'm, have the talent and not nurture. No, because you, 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 you got to work you hard. You can't just, work hard. You can't just you can't, yeah. do a load of hours and you're gonna have the same. Oh no, eight hundred uh, percent. Technique or yeah. same passing no. range or mm -hmm. anything as someone else who. But some like what Tim's just saying is, boy, he sees things. He sees things. You can't yeah. teach someone to see things. You can't. I, I'm sorry. You know, when you talk about pictures on a pit, you know, when you see pictures, we talk about see the picture. You can't teach that because you can't put that session on to say, right, I want your boy to get the ball now. I want him to drop you, a shoulder and I want him to put that. Moments. Yeah, of course. You, you can't yeah, manipulate exactly. moments because otherwise it's not a real moment. Yeah, of course it's not. Right. So you can't say, right, drop your shoulder, come inside. He's going to make that go run. There. You put him in. Yeah. Well, some of the centre half might already be there. 100%. So you've got to see the picture. And that's why I'm a great not, believer. Not even picture. if Tim sat down with Hezzy after every game, analysed it right. on and still couldn't. No, no two games. That, no, that, that, that definitely helps. That definitely helps. I know it will, it will, it will help to say on certain things like, I, I think you should have turned there or you should have done that. with with video analysis but yeah, oh, oh, yeah I mean we don't, We had a game the other week and they filmed it on that video, video, yeah, video, yeah, video which yeah. was and I found it really interesting it was really good but you can't you can't teach pictures mm -hmm. you can teach patterns of play but you can't teach a, you know you know we watch England play now and you know I watched Foden what, yesterday and what Foden was do, a, though is help people recognise it like because do you think you can? I think you can. I, I mean, it, you from know, my we, own we experience, have so many I think dribblers, you can. We have so many dribblers. Now, the natural thing to do when you dribble is to get your head down. 
You know, we're taught all these tricks, yeah, of these foot overs and these Maradonas and these this and that. How can you possibly do them tricks with your head up to no, see? Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Do you know what I mean? I, well, I think, speaking from like my, my own experience, I don't want to rehash everything that mm -hmm. I said in my own podcast, but it's relevant to this discussion. So the type of player I was, was a very skillful player, but there was never a time in my life where I couldn't see the pass. I, could always, I always had that, playing 11 aside. I went to Cyprus to play futsal and... The, the, the guys there, I didn't understand uh, movement off the ball and stuff like that. I didn't understand it. I'd never been taught it. I was 25, 26 at this point. Yeah. Okay. And people said there to me, you're just playing with your talent. You're not playing with your, with your, you're not thinking about the team structure or what's happening off, off the ball around you and stuff like that. Not that if I got the ball, I can still see a pass, but if someone's uh, moving into a certain position, I wouldn't know how to balance with them and things like that. Mm. And I think it's a little bit of an oversimplification to say, oh, this player can dribble, but can he pass? Or he can do both. There's other parts to being an intelligent player positioning. Like when you were talking about Kimmich, Kimmich's strength is not that he can pass the ball really accurately. That's not it. Because we had Gerard, we had Lampard, all those guys could pass the ball very accurately. What they didn't understand was positional play very well. They... That they weren't as as clued in as people like Bush gets in terms of when to offer for the ball, yeah, things like that. And yeah, and Bush gets was playing with Indiesta and Xavi in front of him. I mean, but he, he plays now still, and he still looks unbelievable in those, yeah. in those situations. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's who, always who would you play him or Rodri for Spain? I think they'll both play. Mm. I yeah, think they'll both maybe. play probably. But but sorry, yeah, go on. Sorry, no, no, I, yeah. I just I want to bring it back to the to the dribbling part and talking about we could because you're so humble I think like it's taken a long time to persuade him to come and get involved with us mm. um, I think you know you, you have got that mindset where I think straight after the Reese James uh, podcast I was ringing you saying Kim come on get involved get involved and you were like look at the time where I'm saying his name mm -hmm. said it now you're <laughs> um, <laughs> um, too happy about that <laughs> the, 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 no but like um, you said look we just need to wait until you know he hasn't he has you said he hasn't achieved anything yet 100%. that's what it was wasn't it 100 percent. um so i think the more and more we've got to know each other i think you know you, you can trust what we're trying to do and mm -hmm. i think this was appropriate for you to come sure. get involved today um i just kind of wanted to give that context before sort of um continuing on to the next point but like hezi is the product of the modern academy environment and by a lot of people they would think of him as like the top player in england for his in his age category so it's work for him to go through the process of having a lot of time on the ball, dribbling, doing all that kind of thing, and then learning to pass later on mm -hmm. with that methodology. Can I tell you a really random thing yeah. that we did? I reckon until eight years old, I never did a shooting drill with him. Right. Never. No, I didn't teach him. I, I taught him how to handle the ball in all kinds of different ways, whether that be in the air, using all different body parts on the floor, you know, um, and, um, you know, aw awkward bounces, like all these kind of things. And um, we, we spent a lot of time, it's fond memories, man, like hours and hours of going over kind of the same thing over and over again. And that's another thing Hezzy had that um, is quite unique, I would say, for a young child. And it's, he has an incredible, incredible attention to detail. And even at like three, four, he would do hours with a ball, like on the same thing and, and not be bored of it. And I was like, I, I saw that very early and that he wanted to, he was always hungry for knowledge. Like you'll notice if you ever take a session with Hez and there's a group of people, he will always be at the front. Like even now he still has the, the habit of, you, you see him muscle his way through it, like, because he's smaller than most people. He's like, no, excuse me. Yeah. Wherever and he ends up at the front, like, all the time. Um, and so, yeah, I, that was a great grounds for being able to teach him in depth how to deal with a ball because a lot of kids might get to a point, and Dad, we've done this, like, 75 times. Like, uh, and they, you know that whole kind of, oh, I've got it because I did it once. It has never had that. Like, we always have a thing in our family, you've got it when a random person can ask you to perform something and you can do it. Yeah. What, what was your thinking behind not, not doing finishing? Mm -hmm. um, it was just, my thinking was, if you can 
uh, learn the feel of a football and using your various body parts for it, um, then I think that instinct of like, so you'll be able to afford yourself more chances to shoot in a game if you can deal with the ball really well. And then it, I feel finishing is a natural thing. I, I feel like for, if you talk about someone like Jermaine Defoe, um, you know, I don't want to say versus anyone because it's a bit of a part to <laughs> the people that I might <laughs> compare him against. But Jermaine Defoe was very instinctive on how he finished. Like, I don't believe anyone taught him exactly how to finish. They may have given him the the, the blanket kind of, this is, this is the part of your foot you use for power, this in step for accuracy or whatever. But he had this thing where I, I was always really intrigued with it. Yeah, because I used to do music, a lot of things to me in life are musical, like, and have a rhythm to them. Yeah. And he used to shoot on an offbeat. That's what I would call it. Like, so there's a, usually you would take a certain stride, one, two, whack, or whatever. And he would kind of be on one whack, like, and keeper, shot off really keeper didn't really see it. Yeah, but... He, on, he worked on that. I'm sure he did. Under, see, this is the I, I, the I'm I sure have this, that quite shocked me then. What Tim just said about the finishing, because mm -hmm. I don't, I was talking, I was talking yeah. to myself oh, before, yeah. and mm -hmm. there's no emphasis on finishing mm -hmm. in the game. The game's about goals. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens, for how good Tim Boy's going to be, he will be judged on goals. Mm -hmm. Does he play like a ten or yeah. a ten? He will have to score goals. Mm -hmm. One million percent. You know, Mason Mount, who's one of my favourite players, doesn't score enough goals. Mm -hmm. He doesn't score enough goals to the amount of times he touches the ball. It is such a thing that we get away from. I, I'm, I'm shocked in academies at the moment where someone will beat three players, they'll get to the middle of the goal and they'll shoot there, mm -hmm. there and over there mm -hmm. and no one says a word. Mm -hmm. And the kid's not even devastated that he's missed. It's so like, I, it's like, oh, well, that didn't matter, but I, I just beat three players. Yeah. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. So I didn't think about that, but that's another attribute that is disproportionately kind of, I wouldn't say ignored, but... But most to of the people that are goal scorers, are, 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 like I played with one of the best, you say about Jermaine Ian Defoe, Wright. which are Ian Wright. Yeah, Ian Wright. Top. Ian Wright. But, and again, left foot, right You know, left, left foot, right foot, but everything was like bang, bang, bang. It's repetition, like you doing with your boy, is it? like what you're doing with him and you're doing skill, skill, skill. Right, it was finish, finish, finish. Yeah. All the time, all the time. It, it becomes yeah. natural. They don't and look where the goal on. is. It they does move on. So like, sorry to... Yeah, that's all right, no, sorry. It, it, it does obviously move on. I'm, I'm talking about a time in life, like there was an earlier time when that was an emphasis. Mm. Um, however, obviously you as you grow, then you're trying to refine other things. Do you know what I mean? Like you say, like you're finishing, you're passing over different ranges, whatever it is. Um, and again, Ian Wright, like you've played with Ian Wright, mm. so you know all about him. And obviously you will see all your strikers and, and forward players in general on the training pitch, practicing their finishing mm. and, and whatnot. But again, Ian Wright for me, uh, again, is another thing we have is I think football's a feeling. I don't think it's a robotic thing. I think it's a feeling. I think that when you, like you say, the pictures are always changing and there are so many variables, um, you know, in one picture. How can something have a robotic way of finishing if the variables could cut off one way? Do you see what I'm saying? Does that make any sense? No. So Go on. With, Go within it. that, there, there's like, like a set, let's say Man City, for example, they try and get in behind you on the wing. Yes. Okay. And they, they'll always have like three three solutions for the cross, like near post, cut back or back post. Mm -hmm. So the defense will block mm -hmm. probably two of them most of the time, but it's really hard when they get in behind you to block all those three situations. Mm -hmm. So you've, re you've repeated and repeated all three of those actions in training and then you have to pick the right one of those three variables mm -hmm. in the moment. And that's why it, I, I'm with you that mm -hmm. uh, there's loads of different situations in the game. I am with you. Mm -hmm. But when you say, I don't think it can be predicted and robotic, it is a lot. As it gets better coached and more coached, Until it does the execution. become... 
it does become mm. more more pre-planned in terms of defensive mm. movements and also your attacking patterns. It, it has become that way because of better coaches. Mm. They want control. Guardiola wants control. He doesn't want to let his players, obviously this is an extreme example, yeah, yeah, he's the yeah. best in the world. Mm. He doesn't want to go and let his players just do random things and he relies on his players doing being magic. He, mm. he, he won't do that ever. I think that that was probably a problem with Man United. You had a load of big name quality players on the ball and they were undercoached mm. and, and you saw the problem there. So yeah, for sure. But it, I mean, goal scoring is such an emphasis. We, we, we don't look, I don't think we personally look at, it's all about goals. At the end of the day, if you're playing in certain positions on a football pitch, you will have to score goals. And I, I think that's important at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, because the more you don't score, the more you're gonna get put further and further back down the pitch. Yeah. Do I you agree. know what I mean? I agree you know, 100%. you know, because some people I played with people who couldn't hit a barn door. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I played with Ian Wright, who you can clear a ball to the halfway line and it's it's cuffy. Yeah. It's off the cuff, and you know, and he'll chip the goalie. Linking back to the question, sorry, our yeah. academies. <laughs> <laughs> our academies. Well, <laughs> our academy is just trying to develop a type one type of player. Sorry, I wanted to make a point on this. Sorry. Yeah. So um, I was going to say what position is Hezzy, but now I've established he's a 10. Okay. So you said it's worked for him, but we're all in agreement that England is producing plenty of really good attacking players. Yes. I don't think that was the... That wasn't the issue, and that's not a question. But the, the problem is further back. Yeah. We can't get the ball to them because we're not producing. Well, you, your own is it's it's anywhere in anywhere you play football from from seven to to the top level, international level, or on a Sunday morning or in vets football. If you're a centre forward, you're owning as good as the person who's providing you. It's as simple as Look that. At England. It's as Look simple at that as that. Team. You know, that I, I was Sterling. manager at Walsall. Thierry Henry couldn't have come to Walsall and got forty goals. Mm -hmm. He'd get 30 for Arsenal, but he wouldn't get 42 leagues down because he's not getting the ball. So it's, it's so important, you know, as it will always, it will always be judged on goals mm -hmm. and assists. Mm -hmm. But then he's got to rely on the kid in front of him. But it's the same the other way around. You're only as good as the one who you're provided. So, yeah, but so here's the problem. We're going to, with the method the academies are going with, mm. we're going to produce a lot of really good wingers and tens. Not many and, nines. And not, fullbacks. Yeah, fullbacks, fullbacks because they're going to be converted. The wingers, wingers. are going to be exactly. good, yeah. yeah, 100%. Yeah. But the central players, mm. it's going to be a little bit more difficult. The central midfielders who, who can progress the ball quickly, they're not, they're not coming through. The nines, maybe not, and centre backs. So really, as well in academies, we're we're looking for today and not for. Well, the well, they're looking to sell players. That's what I was they're say. looking to sell oh, players. Yeah. Right. If you if you could produce, let's say, if someone did produce a Neymar, Neymar, how much did he get bought for by PSG by? Two hundred million. million. Two hundred million. It's a two hundred million pound value player. And that's your gamble, your, your, your play. Your you know what? We, but we, 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 we have this thing, and you know, I see a program, the Crystal Palace one the other week, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's good. It was good. But they bring in a little young kid who's quite small, who probably like it, and they go, Well, Messi's like, and you just said Neymar. We, we, we're always using that player. If you play a hundred, if, if Messi plays a hundred times for Chelsea, he's had an unbelief. That is that is making it. Oh, definitely. No, no. You know, I think but, what the point. But we all, we, we're always looking. We're always going Messi, Neymar, Messi. Neymar. Oh yeah, yeah, no. yeah. But like, if, if the academies, if they're at a board level, saying right, we're spending twenty million pound a year in this academy, what return investment are we getting? And there may be someone, I'm not saying this happens, but I'm just theoretically, they say, oh, but we could be producing a Neymar in the thing. And then that's got a... But we haven't, no, for the, we haven't for the last 50, 100 I, I think years, the, have we? The, the point is that what they're trying to do is produce saleable assets. And the, the best saleable assets are attacking players because they go for more money. Mm. So Chelsea's model is we're going to produce a load of wingers and Chelsea. fullbacks. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't be, I don't be, it's just, I don't be, I don't be, it's just I, I, Chelsea. I, 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 I understand Chelsea more because I, I did oh. a, a little bit there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But their, their model is they're, they're producing a load of wingers and fullbacks fullbacks basically who can dribble and they can sell for big money and then with that money they're not going to produce Jorginho I know I know some people don't rate but Jorginho is the first player he's, he's the first player on the team sheet at yeah I love him you know I, I go I Joe's every week he plays every week but, yeah. but they're not going to produce one of him top five but they will players in the country. with the money that they're going to get Buddy, from Tarek Lamptey team, or <laughs> two, no, two, two youth not, team players not in my fantasy team two youth team players are going to fund that signing of a Jorginho they don't need to produce every type of player because they're relying on those players to get from somewhere else they're, they're going to pay the money that they receive from 
the from the wingers that they produce for the players that they can't produce. Why, or they not? Won't why, produce. Not, well, why, why is that not then? Produce them? Why, why is that? Not produce no, because it's harder. Yeah, it's, it's a lot harder. Exactly. You have to think more. And, and that's and that's where the FA have said Premier League. You just get on with it. You produce your players because that's the way it all always been done. And then it's not producing these type of players that the national team needs. But the Premier League it's, it's like Tim's boy plays as a 10. So he's really reliant on people giving him the ball. So it must be players Especially at Chelsea that, that, that give you the ball. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it must be, it must be, it must yeah. go on to pass it. Got some so it must, exactly. So because that's it, like but there's levels yeah, to that as well isn't it so the Barcelona kids will probably I would guess based on history be better than what the Chelsea kids are well, in those positions when we've played them they're fantastic yeah I mean it's the, because there's a different emphasis that's a good question mm -hmm. and we're going to go to the pack I think yes. know, this is good we're going to move on to some of the other questions soon yeah. but I want, I want to ask this to Tim um, with, with Chelsea's under 12s under 13s under 14s that he's had experience mm -hmm. with um, how have Chelsea got on against Barcelona, Bayern Munich, those top clubs from Europe? Um, obviously, we're still in youth football, so you can have a day when it works for you and doesn't work for them because you're not at that stage where everyone's quite, as a whole team, got all their jobs down. Do you know what I mean? So I still feel it's... It, but generally speaking... Chelsea don't do too bad. I like, expect them to because they're going to be and, athletic. And also, I was just about to say, okay. <laughs> going on to that, <laughs> navigate that night. Um, yeah, because they are, uh, there is a lot of athletes at Chelsea, good okay. movers, um, you know, people who could run you down in no point, do you know what I mean? Whatever seconds. Um, and often when you go out to Europe, the press is a lot for that. They're not. They're not used to that. Like the, the European teams uh, outside of the, that, yes. that This happened recently as well because okay. I think the nines and tens went to Italy, yes. and I asked one of the boys, "How did you do?" And he goes, "We played Atletico. They pressed us high, and we didn't know how to come out." Well, but that's the flip of what Tim yeah, no, said. Yeah, yeah, Chelsea it, were better. Yeah, the they, they were. Oh, no, they, yeah, they, they were. However. It, I'm sure if a nut, if a European team mm -hmm. um, like Spanish, German, whatever, started to uh, utilize a press, and then also had the knowledge of how to, you know, keep the ball really well, mm -hmm. that would be a problem. And the other thing is, at somewhere like Chelsea, um, sorry Chelsea, I love you, but there is a gang <laughs> of individuals like all pioneering for you know their their spot and 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 I think it's encouraged to an extent. But can I just go, go for it. to this quickly and then let you carry on? Yeah sure. Um, sure. I know we're using and I'm gonna be a bit defensive because obviously I work there but like <laughs> no, just I was checking you didn't have a Chelsea shirt on right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Miami today. The, the carrier of this is it is reflective of what goes on at a lot of other Cat One Academies. No. Not, not just Chelsea. No, no I, I know. Yeah, I, I, no, yeah. As I said, the reason I said Chelsea was because that's the only one I've been inside at, at all. So yeah, okay. I, and and I guess from my personal experience, i.e., going out with Hez and and his age group or the age group above, whatever, they have done. Hezzy has a lot of medals. They have won a lot of tournaments they've been in um, and they would be expected to I guess they're you know they're a top academy there's no two ways about it yeah. um, but there has been ways at times that we've gone out and you know we've really played well and I would say oh that was outstanding mm -hmm. there's other times we've just run over man and it's not really oh, right. it ain't felt quite the same to me but we got a trophy so mm -hmm. you know happy days yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the reception trophy cabinet is growing by the minute. That's all right. So when we play those European teams, mm. we have an equal share of possession. Uh, I wouldn't say against Barcelona, they but play. Barcelona for me, in and again, it's gonna, an outlier, it, it, it's going to be age group like because every age group is different in the personnel Chelsea have and the personnel that they they would have in uh, Barcelona or whatever, but. I know the coaching is the same, but they have different people. So there will be some kind of difference. And in my experience, them, Ajax, I'm trying to think who has it said, probably City, like City, Ajax and um, Barca, 
have been probably the toughest teams they've played at Ajax are unbelievable City have a Spanish ideology all through the club well, there you go. So. yeah it makes sense mm. should we move on to the next question let's move on that's yeah, a great on. discussion though. <laughs> oh okay how to approach athleticism in children? So I, I was just going to say, like, I think... <laughs> I was one he made earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I, like Peter, it? I haven't seen the question, I promise. But, um, he hadn't I, even finished it, Rob. <laughs> I was going to say before there, um, like, I think people think whenever we talk about athleticism, we're we're coming down on people. We're not. It's great to have athleticism. Like, For sure. I, I just wanted to say that. I, it has, like... I think the improved athleticism will force the technical players to become more athletic. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't think it's a bad thing that players are athletic at all. I, don't, like, I just want everyone to realise when, when we say athleticism, we're not using it as a negative thing against these players mm. at all. I, I think the common offence that parents and people who have this athleticism problem complex yeah. um, have is when the person comes in as basically a 100-metre sprinter and he's not, he's not a footballer as of yet. Do you know what I mean? Technically, I, he hasn't got... He, he's got trampoline touch or, do you know, or whatever you want to call it. Do you know what I mean? Um, and people go, right, so you brought him in to basically just run about yeah. and almost UFC people or... And, and, and they... They find that, I'll be honest, people find that offensive because the young technical players, not all of them can cope with that mentally and physically. I think people would react the same if it was if it was the other way around, though. If a player was really good on the ball, but yeah. they couldn't move at all. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm talking oh, about extremely. Yeah, 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 yeah. They could not move at all. Yeah. They were letting everyone else down in the team because of it. I think the reaction would be very similar. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, the, thing, the thing is, though... Like, with, with your boy playing where he's playing, mm -hmm. as he gets older, he will rely on pace in front of him. It'll be a dream for him. When mm -hmm. I played as a 10, I wanted pace. Yeah. I wasn't worried about anything else. I didn't worry about if they had a good touch or what. I, like players I wanted well. players who were going to make a move and I, I would find them. That was you my job. To a space. Yeah, and, and then, and then oh, 100%. There's swings and roundabouts, you know what I mean? For, mm -hmm. for every player, everybody needs someone around them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Sweet. your boy will need someone around him who's going to win the ball back yes. and, and give him yes, the ball. Absolutely. Of course, it's when it gets complicated and the person who's supposed to win the ball to give to your boy mm -hmm. starts thinking that he can do what you can yeah. do. And then it all goes out the window. That is another problem that you see. <laughs> but this is this is why we don't do make this. that player yeah. what you're talking about. Because it gets to a stage where that player is the player who's getting the ball and he gives it to someone and he gets to go to receive it again and tick it over and he doesn't get the ball. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't get it again. He doesn't get a bit. So his next thing, his brain will go, I ain't passing. Yeah. I ain't passing. Yeah. Well, if, but he's not if a everyone's dribbler. taught not to pass and stay on the ball, then you're, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're not going to have players who, who can move the but ball is quickly. It, this is why I think with Academy, we're always in in for today. It's like mm -hmm. we've got to make sure we're good at 8, 9, 10. Yeah. No, we, every, all these smaller players are getting eaten up by the physical players that have not got the IQ of the smaller players sometimes. Not all of them. Oh, yeah. Some of them are. Absolutely. But they got you've got to look at a vision. I've always said from day one, and I said to Sean from day one, my boy will always be in the laps of the coach's vision of he ain't going to get the ball and beat five players. He, he, he ain't going to do that. Ain't his game. It wasn't my game. It ain't his game. But he gets into space and he finds a pass and he's intelligent. But they have to see that. Now that's 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 what, what will happen. If they don't, he'll get eaten up in the system because there's kids that will be much more quicker than him and stronger, but they're not brighter. You, you know, that? and I'll sit on here and I'll tell you now, I don't care when I go to Chelsea what people think. I know that he's bright. He's tell bright. No. He's intelligent. Sure bright. He's intelligent, but do you think he'd do better in Spain? Uh you know what? I don't know because I, I, I like to give people. I, I like. I, I, you know, I think. I think these these clubs have good coaches. I really do. I don't. I don't sit there anywhere I go. I go Chelsea and Fulham. I don't sit there and think, nah, clueless. I, I think, think they're good coaches. I don't like it when with the same brush. No, I don't like it when when I don't like it when the dads are telling the kids what to do. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I, that is my pet hate. These coaches. I don't go into the school and tell the teacher what to do. Yeah. But what I don't like is when these kids make mistakes, mm -hmm. they work it out themselves. 
Now, if my kid goes to school tomorrow and he's given a sum and he gets it wrong, yeah. the teacher, I expect them to tell them what they did exactly. wrong. Not go work it out yourself. And this is see the problem I, see I you. And I, I want to nip it in the bud now. Learn the kids now. You can't build a house or yes, water. 100%. Learn it. Just pull them out and go, you know what? I think you should have done that. You, do you think you could have passed that? Or mm. do you think you could have gone into that space? I just, I think you've got to learn the kids now. I don't think I, it's... I was told to let the kids make their own decisions at Chelsea. And the other thing at is... At what age? Uh, seven, <laughs> eight. But, but, but anyway, the other thing is, uh, we're not blaming the coaches. I don't think we, no, anyone I think here the thinks the coaches good. are bad. No, I, like, I think I like the, the direction coaches. from the club is the problem. We're also uh, not, we're we're not blaming, we're not blaming Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. We shouldn't listen to the... I'm not being but the FA way, you know, is... We got to change it up. It ain't working. It ain't working. You know, even when we got into the Champions League final, you know, as Rob said, and it's true. The percentage-wise, we played yesterday a German team. They're they're average. Yeah. I'm not being horrible. They were average yesterday, and they still had more possession than us. They were more comfortable on the ball than us. You know, we get into a thing of going, oh, you know what? We'll play their way now. We'll roll it, and we're not one person. You know, it was England Germany. Yesterday. I was at the game. Not one tackle. Not one tackle. No one. It was like. I don't know, we're getting into this false thing of, you know, we're copying everybody else. And I just, we've got to play. If we're picking kids with power and pace all the time and, and being quick, why don't we play like that? Mm. <laughs> I don't think we are picking just power and pace. That's no, they're, they're I, did, skillful. I did say, they're skillful. I, did, I, did, I tell you what, there's a percentage in there. Let's be honest. Yeah, but if you have a team of pure technicians... No, no one's saying that. No one's saying that. I just said that we've got to... It's also... You know, if I'm if I'm playing in Tim's boy's position, I want pace around me. I need pace going forward, you know. No, just... I like Peter Crouch was a good footballer, brilliant footballer. But I wouldn't want to play with him as a number 10 because I want movement in front of me. Okay. You know, I play with Ian Wright. George Graham said, right, first 20 minutes, run that way. Keep on going. You won't get the ball. Keep on going. Then the game opens up and then I can get on the ball. If the game becomes tight, it don't matter how good you are skillfully and how good you are on the ball, okay. people will double up on you. And this is where I don't I don't see the learning. They're not getting learned at a young age. It's like, work it out yourself. Yeah, no, mad. that's it's like mad. Robbie Williams does a concert <laughs> and he sings and then he puts the mic out. No, you sing. I'm paying for you to sing. <laughs> not for us to sing to you. You sing. And that's but why I'm my kids at Chelsea I, and for I, them I to learn the game. That. That at all the, the, the maybe, maybe, maybe the coaches no don't know maybe the coaches well, don't know this is why when I was 26 well I need to start I getting out there I need to, I'm, I'm sitting there every week sorry sorry no you good uh, that's so funny. Yeah, it's a good one. It's, it's not about Robbie Williams, is it? Well, <laughs> well, it's about music. How is it? Is it? Yeah. It's similar to what I was saying. But yeah. Can music help develop your kid into a football player? That is really odd that that came to me, but I believe rhythm is important okay. in football. So what? So let's say that someone wants their kid to become a footballer. They've got a, I don't know, what are you playing a type of music when they're three years old, four years old? I, I, Loga Benito? <laughs> Listen, I, I, I just, me personally, in our house, like music is always on with musical family before even sport. Um, and I feel like it encourages a certain freedom of expression. Uh, that's just my personal you know, like my all my kids dancing, like all of it. Hez does. Don't let <laughs> Hez is not bad at all. Like um, he's saying the other day, I was like, "Sorry, what?" Mm -hmm. Like, but <laughs> he's the type of kid that annoys you as well because he's like, he just do everything well. Don't <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it. I. That's what in our family. That's all I can say. In our family, music has encouraged you know a showmanship. Um, uh, you know, freedom of expression, which I could see interlinked in football. And obviously you have music in the dressing room all the time, didn't you? Like, why is it players with their headphones on all the time? There is some correlation yeah, between... It takes commonality with players. Maybe, yeah. Like, and, and takes also their mind away from the game. Takes their mind away. It could also be uh, rouse, rouse them up for a game. Do you know what I mean? There's all kinds of things yeah, I music can do. I used that. So... Go on, on it, Merce. Yeah, I well, I got to thank the Hollies then because that's what was played in my <laughs> house when I was young. And that's not what we're talking about. Is that what you're playing for Freddie now? No, yeah, yeah. He ain't heavy. Yeah, I, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean when, you, when you watch Brazil, I mean, when I used to train with England, you used to have music on mm. when we were training mm. to warm up. You know, there'd be music. And especially when you, you, you look back to Brazil in, in the old yeah. days, I don't know about now, but it's there was always the music. It was always, yeah. it was always yeah. to a rhythm. Elvesia. Even the passing, it was always, it was always to, a, to a rhythm. Yeah, I mean, I've never really looked into it, but I, I have seen it, but I really didn't pay much attention to it. Mm -hmm. I don't like music in the dressing room, if I'm being oh, honest. Yeah. I'm not a great lover of it. I think uh, there's concentrate, focus, you know, focus. Yeah. yeah, I did like a laugh, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's probably the music weren't my cup of tea, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I wasn't allowed to bring my CDs in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. then, you know, the way that they play and maybe historically England have been maybe a bit stiff. A bit stiff. I, I, bit stiff. I, I think that's, that's fair to say. Oh, yeah. And what are the reasons for that? Like, yeah, maybe is music an influence? Perhaps, maybe, maybe. Music's yeah. part of culture, yeah, and the yeah, culture is the say, influence. Yeah. So I don't think it's directly yeah. music, yeah, but yeah, I think yeah, it's I, yeah, the culture. I mean, I would get away, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say we you're going to become a great player because of music. No, but right. it, of course it's not. horses for courses. Mm -hmm. yeah. It helps if mm -hmm. it helps someone, it helps someone. Mm -hmm. Right, next question. Right, would love to hear the group's thoughts on the value of playing up at the under nine to under 11 levels. How do you know if it's appropriate to look for opportunities for a child to play up? Is this an important development milestone at these ages? I think it's all down to the coaches, in my opinion. I think the coaches are paid, it's their job to know if they're right to go up to that level. I think if they're not, I think it's so wrong. I think if you're putting someone up to play at a higher level and they're not ready, I don't see the reason to put them up, if I'm being honest. I think, you know, you have a journey and you go along with your age group and if you're lucky enough, like Tim's boy and, and he's good enough to go up and play at that level, play at that level. Don't put a kid up for the sake of it to, sh to show if you're a coach of a team I'm putting him up a year and it looks good mm -hmm. on them because yeah, yeah. it won't help the kid. It'll set them back. You know, I, they, it's not a rush, this. No, no. It's not a rush. Do you know what I mean? Well, there's and a reason what, they're in the age. Yeah, and that's why I think we, we sort of, you know, I think we, we, there's got to be a plan for every kid. You've got to have that vision of going, this is till they're 17, 18, 19 years of age. Not, not now. Do you know what I mean? And I, think I think the benefit would only be if they're not getting challenged. Yeah, um, but th that means they're right then. That yeah. means they're right to go up. Don't exactly. put someone up for the sake of yes. putting them up because it looks yeah. good on the coach. Because I'm, I've, or the, I've, or the, or the parents. Yeah, yeah, well, the parents. Yeah, well, yeah, well, the the parent, yeah. Say, well that's oh, the yeah, problem. Yeah, you're you're always going to have that. You know, Tim will probably have that with other parents where they're all be going. Well, how comes how comes as he's playing up and I'm my boy ain't. <laughs> I mean, it's horses for courses. It's it, everybody's got their own journey and mm. it's time. And you know, you don't want to ruin these kids. In my opinion, I think because the bigger and stronger they. Get as they get up. Some kids are going to you know, look how big Tim is, and all I hear is his boy is small. I mean, he's going to have a he, he might fly up in in a year, two years' time, which I'm sure he will be bigger than what he is. But there's just times it's taking it steady. I think some parents are like, well, well why has my kid not been moved up to two years? Or why sometimes he... it can be a maturity thing as well. Of course, yeah, hundred percent. Because you're you're then going to socialise with an older group, yeah. or whatnot, and you've got to be able to handle that because they they do stuff like it, well, if it's uh, under thirteen, to get to that kind of stage, you're doing day release, you're staying away. Hezzy did that a year early, but then again. He, he, Another um, kid might not be ready for that. Yeah, yeah that, that was what I was trying to say. Sorry, Marcel. Were you going to say something, Marcel? Yeah, what might be some of the reasons a kid get, um, might play up? I think Merce said him if he's not being challenged, challenged. in his own I, I think not being challenged, I think it might be bigger than stronger than it's everybody big, else, which a, sometimes I think that's a problem we have in this country. Because we go big, strong, quick, mm. the big, strong... Quick kids don't get to learn, if you know what I mean. It's like, because it's too easy agree. for them. Like, they're playing against someone who's not as quick, as fast as them. They do lazy things. Yes. But when everybody gets to that stage and they grow up and get bigger or quicker or shrewder, mm -hmm. they don't... Uh, can sorry, I just yeah, on, Only because that is something I believe one million percent. When we were playing grassroots football... Obviously, the keepers are small, the goals are big, and, and the kids that can line. kick it yeah. from the halfway oh, line oh, mate, oh, would no. get in a shed. <laughs> Should be allowed goals. to score from there. No. Oh. Should be allowed to score. <laughs> Not at that age, anyway. No. And, we and, used to play 11 aside side goals, didn't we? And, oh, and, and, and basically, you, you had people getting very excited about their child's mm. goal scoring yeah. numbers. Um, and I, I, I confess, I even had conversations with people like, 
you, you might want to just maybe concentrate a bit more on the technical side of yeah. things and really developing his touch and stuff because because he can kick it two metres ahead of him and then the person who started in front of him still can't get to the ball mm. before him. That's a false positive. That will That's wear not, off. Yeah, that will wear this off. This is where I'm saying where you've got to look further than right today. Now. You know what I mean? You've got to look further than and, that. And also it's, it's not, uh, what's the word? Um, it's, we're not like bravado measuring here. Like it's got to be, if you're trying to develop a footballer, mm -hmm. it has to be long-term, mm -hmm. like from a kid. Yeah. Like, it can't be at under 11s, my child was the best in the country. Who cares? Because now he works in McDonald's. <laughs> like, no, I, 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 I always say, there's no point being the best player in the world. Either. That's why like, when you're born, he needs to kick on and play 100 times with Chelsea. You know, that, that success. Do you know what I mean? Not, not now, but it's always like you've got to be the best today. And that's Absolutely. the problem I think we have. It's like, you know, we do races at Chelsea, you know, uh, I, I think I think that even you like, saying ball don't play football yeah he tried to play it's football a, he couldn't play other clubs yeah, yeah. You know, it does at other clubs of course it does yeah. it does but everybody's looking for that fast player and you're not no, that's fast that's what you, you need to be fast up here. Uh, if you're fast up here, you've got a chance. But we don't, they probably don't measure that. Uh, I think, no, they don't, they I, don't. I think as well, sorry, Rob, uh, I think that also you said something that is very true, that when you are bigger and you can handle yourself easier, it does, I feel it can, not always, because you can't ever paint anything all with the same brush, mm. but it can sometimes have that... Um, way of like I'm going to rely on my bigness and strongness and not practice mm. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what that's I really what I'm saying because they be, yeah. become lazy because it becomes too so easy, easy they're playing yeah. against Kick you know what I mean any old house yeah you know, you know, I'm, yeah, you know and what I mean because like, I'm quicker and stronger and that, that, that's anything, where I think and that's where I think moving up you have to be really careful, really careful with that. But I, I see a lad at Man City a, a year ago or so, Man City come to Chelsea and played, and they had a kid up front. He was really big. Oh, yeah. And he was good. Like, and he was scoring loads of goals, and everybody's going, oh, my God, and I'm sitting there, and everybody's going, oh, my God, this kid is unreal, unreal. He's playing against kids that big, yeah. <laughs> but he was doing nothing special. It it was doing nothing. It wasn't Matthew like his, it wasn't like his movement was great, or That's he was doing fair. a foot over and him for scoring. It was like I felt sorry for him. I was thinking, right, I, ho I haven't seen him since. So I think he might have been moved up because when I've played against Man City yeah. since, he might have been because he needs to move up and then learn how to be a bit more cute. Mm -hmm. And that's not a disrespect to him. Yeah. That's like he they need it's to the look after around him. him. Yeah, that's exactly. It's not him. To, yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's, sometimes it's unfair on bigger kids because they can have a lot of good ideas and great techniques. Absolutely. Yeah, no, of course but I can. Absolutely. Sometimes you'll get little comments from people that would say, oh, he's yeah. just big. Is that so they're judging him. Oh, no, but you, you know, you can, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you can see that. You can see that, Sean. Do you know what I mean? You, you know the ones who, you, you know, like, no. Zlatan Ibrahimovic is not just big. Yeah. No, he's yeah. like yeah. a, he, yeah. he's proper like, player. Uh, yeah. When I say freak of nature, I mean it in the nicest yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. He's so. like massive, but he's also great technically. Yeah. Like Jerome as well. well. I like him anyway. Peter Crouch was unbelievable. 100%. The example that we've got with Nikita. Yeah. Like with him when he was in our under seven team, mm -hmm. like so much bigger than all the other kids. Mm -hmm. um, and we hoped he would get there with his thinking, with his technique. And the way that me and Paul were coaching the group was very much an emphasis on playing. We could have just had him as the striker yeah, and probably got loads yeah. of goals, but we knew that wasn't going to help him long term. So we're constantly testing him. We're putting him in situations where he had to play. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, after a period of time, he, he couldn't keep up with what we were asking of him. And um, we took the decision to start guiding him to start playing as a goalkeeper. Um, and, and he's good. He's gone, yeah. I mean, he's had an offer. I think we can say it. He's had an offer from Fulham. Um, I'll edit this out, apparently. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he, he's had offers. He's had offers. And he's, what's his name? And he's, and he's comfortable with the ball at his feet. Because yeah. he's played outfield. He's yeah. played outside. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. He, exactly. But I think if we'd been so focused on him... Oh, if well, we was focused up. on results, yeah, yeah. we'd have just put him up front and he'd have just run through everybody. He could have looked like a star for three like, years. We'd yeah. have got manager yeah. of the month yeah. for every, <laughs> every week. But we were. We were getting beat like... Some games 12 in one. You know, we, we, we lied on the directors to keep us in 
the job. But we have seen it go the other way. With um, we had Clarky, who was bigger than everyone else as well, but again forced him to be on the ball and mm. and make good decisions and whatnot. And he took it. But on that, board. that's a clever kid. That's a yeah. clever kid as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? You know, you give the, give the kid credit as well. That's yeah, clever yeah, yeah. by him, where he does the right things. Yeah, still took and everything take on board. Listen, yeah, mm. exactly. I'm going to move on to our next question. Sure. Um, there seems to be far fewer clubs running development centres in the Midlands. So far fewer opportunities. What should we focus on here? Well, for one, I didn't know that that was the case. Um, in the Midlands, there's less development. Like they're saying that, by it, but oh, that's the Villa, know, West I mean, Brom, Birmingham, uh, yes. yeah. yeah. Wolves. Yeah, yeah, Wolves. We yeah. played all of them. Like, well, not all of them. Well, most they're, of. they're saying development centres, not academies. Yeah, so oh, that's sorry. Yeah, okay. Mm. But I think those clubs still would. At what age? Scout. What age? Oh, maybe because pre-academy they'll probably have them, but oh, then maybe yeah. later on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. On. Okay. That's yeah. Where I think they need to all understand that. Yeah, clubs are focusing a lot of their recruitment on the youngest ages. Yeah, of six course. Under seven. It's not yeah, younger and younger. Yeah, yeah, younger and younger. Yeah. Um, because they feel that that's where they can make more of an impact on the players that change their habits. Mm. Um, we're seeing it with success with now the modern footballers mm. have pretty much been at clubs all the way through from under eights onwards. Mm. Um, so, yeah, clubs are putting their resources into younger ages. So, I think I'm going to move on from this question. Um, thank you for sending that in. Next one. Um, what's this one? We've said that one already. Um, what's next? It's the thing about throwing them back down. Yeah, yeah, I put mine under there. I used my brain. <laughs> All right. Why do only zero point zero twelve percent of academy make players make it through to top flight football, despite being in the system since under nine? Oh, someone was Who doing their maths. Who should take responsibility for this failure? Well, there's, there's only so many spots. And and, and, and I, are we saying that this is hundred percent accurate? This yeah. well, fact, regardless of what the figure let, is, it let's say it's I, think, it's I think I think I think sometimes that's down to the parent. I think parents keep their kids in and they're not good enough, in my opinion. million percent. What, you know, so I think that's that's the problem. I think that's where the percentage goes down. I think I think I think clubs sign too many players. I think 17, 18, 19 is too many, in my opinion. I think if you're having one team, I think 12 players is enough, 11 or 12 players. I think if 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 you're number 16 in a batch of kids and you're the last one to be picked, your chances of making it are, are going to be slim. In my, this is just, just no, my I'm opinion. I'm not mad at you, it. I'm not yeah. mad at it. And I'll tell you why. Because when we did grassroots, um, I was the coach and I only had as much as I could field. And if we had someone who was sick one day, we'll play with one less and you'll learn how to keep the ball with mm. one less. Mm. Yeah. Because these are things that will actually maybe help you in the future. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I mean, yeah, but... Yeah, I just, I just, I think sometimes the parents live in the dream. It's it's really hard to um, like it is, be it's honest it's with it's yourself, hard, yeah. or or to to think clearly when it's your kid. Yeah, no, of course it, there's it, going to be some it, bias, it, isn't it? It is hard. It of is hard. It is. Of course it is. It is hard. <clears throat> you know what? You know. I've, I've, I see a pro at Crystal Palace thing, which I was I liked, but it, it was money, money, money. It was money. Play football for the love of it. Everything follows. Yeah. If you're waking up, when you finish school, if your job's waking up in the morning and going to play football is your job, you have the best job in the world, whatever standard yeah. you're playing at. Absolutely. And that's what, you know, when we say about making it, if you're getting up and your job's a footballer, you've made it. It don't matter who you play for. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I never and really I've understood always, that. And I've always said as well, it don't matter how, it don't matter where you are, you will be found if you're good. If you're good enough, you'll be found. It's, I think I had no this conversation a, last no night in a WhatsApp group. There's no point being at Barcelona and you're no good. Mm. You might as well be at Cupid. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, sorry, just edit that. <laughs> edit that. Sorry. You're better off being at, you're better off being at a cat free or whatever and being a good player because you've got yeah, a chance. I agree, I agree. You've got a chance. You know, too many people. I, you that's, know, if that's, we, that's actually incorrect, Paul, if you don't mind me cutting in there, because statistically, like I know with yeah, Cat One clubs, if you make it to a scholar at that age, after sixteen, you've got like a ninety yeah, percent chance yeah, of it being goes up because you'll you'll trickle down to yeah, but lot, yeah, the, 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 that's, they, that's them. Ones. But I'm not talking yeah. about now. They're they're, they're going to be good. They're not going at sixteen. They're not getting lucky. 
The strat- Kids get lucky at seven and eight. The strategy you talk about well. is go to a lower club and then you've got a better chance of getting the first team. But it doesn't work like that because the lower club players, what can end up happening is they get released from the top clubs and then they then lose their spot in the club. The lower clubs put a lot of stock into a player yeah. being released yeah. from higher. I mean, yeah, maybe, but Paul's going on about the 16th player to get picked. He's yeah, the 16th. not going to go that not, far. Yeah, not going to go that far. I'm not talking about one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five in that batch will that, that that's their focus, in my opinion. In which category club? One, Any, one at one. In a category one. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So if Chelsea go right, is you know what age it was at seven, eight, or right, they're, they're my first five. Mm-hmm. That first five have a lot more chance than sixteen and fifteen, unless they immensely improve in the next two years because they'll be out, and if they're out, that percentage comes down again. So it's not it's not. The fault of the boss name is there's too many players in the system that it, it will yeah, it will be like so that. many there's only so many contracts. Yeah, when you get to fifteen, you know when as it gets to fifteen, he's the best player in his position now at Chelsea. He will have to be the best player in his position in the whole of the country at fifteen. Is that at the whole of the country? Because exactly. if he's not, and someone at Brighton's better. Yeah. The They'll kid at Brighton's in. coming in. Yeah. That's sure. fact. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's sure. not a greatly framed question. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's, 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 no matter how high the standard gets, he's saying, oh, there's a failure. But certain clubs, you might be the best at your club and that'll be enough to get you get you going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, Fulham, certain Millwall, clubs. Crystal Palace... They ain't going to go out and buy the best. So clubs gonna, are more committed to bringing through the players exactly, they and have, to. have less resources yeah, to, they have to bring to. someone else in. They have so, to. Yeah. You know, I think at the moment, I think it's a good time for English, for kids because of the Brexit. You can't oh, yeah. bring it. You know, Arsenal many years ago, virtually every player in the youth team was a foreign player. Do you know what I mean? Because they, like, they were producing better yeah. players, so they bring them over. But, you, you know, Feb, Fab, uh, Fabregas was one of them, so you can't moan. Do you know what I mean? It was like one of the greatest midfield Brilliant, players. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to move on to the next Sorry. question, if that's all right, everyone. Mm-hmm. All right, so this one. We now live in a nice part of town. I'm worried my kid is going to get soft hanging around with posh kids and not <laughs> what it takes to compete with the tough kids. What are your thoughts on this? Oh, you know what? I nice like, humble brag there. I like their thinking. <laughs> I, don't even, I can't even like... There is something I think that is very important... Sorry, Martin, I'll cut you off. No, no, no. Um, go for it, go for it. I think there is something very important in being able to handle yourself on a football pitch. And if you do have, like, you know, at some point you have to get... You have to be able to handle... You do, don't you, mate? Of course like, you do. People are going to come for you. Like, 100%. And there are communities which are very, you know, nicey nice. And obviously that's cool to society. Great, fantastic. But in football, when the football game kicks off, that doesn't always serve you too well because the ones with the the big bravado and the because it comes from hanging around in, you know, you know, south of the river done on the cages and stuff like that and how that helps footballers. And obviously that's another discussion altogether. But I do think it plays a good part. There was uh, probably going to call people for me, but there was a famous time when I went to, we were rolling through Vauxhall and Hez had been asking about the cages because I come from South London. I come from like near Lewisham, um, but now we live in Surrey and it is two different worlds, um, you know, a blessing, but two different worlds. And <laughs> Hez, oh yeah, what's it like? Whatever. I said, you know what? Get out and go and ask them not to play. Like we were rolling through one. Est- I just found an estate that was just off to the left. We parked up. I said, I'm not coming with you. Go with your ball and ask them if you can join in. Mm. And Hezzy was about eight. Oh, right. And they were from 12 to about 16. And I just wanted to see what it'd do. And he went in, it opened the door. You're right, can I play? It kind of laughed a bit. Um, <laughs> someone said, give him the ball. <laughs> and then as soon as after they gave him the ball, it turned from laughing at him to, oh, flip, he's better than you, <laughs> like, or, or whatever. And and then he had a great time, he, all to the point that they followed our YouTube, the, the same kids, they followed our YouTube, they followed our Insta, they keep in touch, say, how's Hezzy getting on? You know, which is obviously a fairy tale story, and I'm sure it doesn't always go that way. But it, 
I, I do think it is important for them to learn to go get pushed over a couple of times and not cry every single time you go on. Go oh on yeah, a, that's my. It's that's too my, much. Yeah, that's like, my it's too much. That's my like, We can't. If we're cry. dealing with real world situations. If you cry every time something goes wrong, I promise you, you will not be in a high percentage of employment. Because yeah. people need problem I mean, that, solvers. That is, they need yeah. go-getters. They need... The, the, when you get to them height, you think in Google, they've got loads of people who, you know, like just, oh my gosh, that's a horrible problem. It's stressing me out to, you know, no, no you wouldn't last a day in it. And it's the same on the I, I see, Yeah, I mean, that's one of the biggest them. compliments that our team get now is when I hear parents go, they're physical. Yeah. And that is, because I remember before when they first started playing, they were so timid. Do you remember we played Lamb of Tigers? They kicked <laughs> them off the pitch and everything. Big up, Dave. Now, big yeah. lot, everybody now is like, oh, they're physical. They look after themselves. I, I, I do. I think I think the hardest place to make it in the whole in the whole of the world, I would say, was London. In the whole world okay. is London, in my opinion. Can you elaborate a bit more on that? Because I just think there's so many kids in a small area yeah. of London, and I just think in certain other parts of the world, it, it is completely different. This is so hard. As Tim was saying, there's a confidence in London kids. I, I don't want to just... There is. A, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a light... There's swagger, that confidence. Swagger. There's a swagger. There's a confidence. It's it's it, it, confidence plays so much of a part in football. You mm. cannot believe you can have all the talent in the world. If you if you ain't got any confidence, you You're ain't going to show any of it. No, you ain't going to play. You've got to be confident. You Charlie got, Kewen. And I, I do. I think I think I think <laughs> London is the hardest place. I, I honestly do. <laughs> Would someone else not argue and say? You say London is the hardest place to make South it. America, Brazil. Yeah. Those I, I was going to say London. London. They're so big. They're massive. They're huge. They're like, massive. If like, you're, if you're, this is like in London. It's like there. Especially now, it's like you've got all these kids, right, who, yeah. who are playing. And, like, I mean, there's, there's, there's thousands and thousands of kids. You can only stay within a thing. It's not like we can, you know, it's not like Freddie can go and play for Aston Villa tomorrow. Oh, so I have a Villa. Distance. Yeah, it's distance. Like, so it, that's got more clubs. Though. Like that's how clubs. hard it is. You've got like a lot yeah, of opportunity. There's a lot of clubs. Yeah, uh, but there's still not enough kids. There's a million kids. I think Anthony spoke on it recently, didn't he? When he was talking about, like they asked him, oh, pressure coming over for such a lot of money. I said, bro, pressure? <laughs> Do you know what pre pressure is when I leave my house at nine in the morning or whatever to go to school and I don't even know if I reach back? <laughs> like, or if I'm going to eat during the day. He needs <laughs> to keep that feeling because like, when he ain't touching the ball yeah, sooner or later, no, that will, he won't think <laughs> that. No. Do you know what I mean? You keep him doing tricks like he's yeah. doing. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's a hard place to make it. I do at this moment in time. You say there's a lot of clubs. You just told me Cap Free wasn't that great. I don't know so if it's... If you're talking about the creme of the creme, the amount of kids is... is I mean, I'm, we're only if talking at the kids... Year old, you've got a six-year-old in yeah. London. There's enough scouts out there. You're going to get noticed and you're going to get good coaching. You could be out in somewhere in the sticks or wherever, and then you're not going to get access to good quality coaching or facilities. It goes back to the same saying. If you're good enough, you will be found. You will be found. You know, I, I think in will. the day of social media, that is fair. Yeah. Like the internet and social media, because back in the day... Depends what you're getting coached, sorry. Yeah, Depends no, no, what you're getting on. coached. Depends. I think like a village in Africa, it would be harder to make it there than it would yeah, make it in London. Like Mane, Mane's story is quite mad. Yeah. It's amazing. Story. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah <laughs> sorry, I, I, I know what you, I, I know what you mean, but it's like, this is, this is a, a footballing nation. Do you know what I mean? This is, a, this, is our, this is our sport, you know? It's, it's, it's different. It's like, Africa's a massive place. Africa, they have good players. Yeah, and the good players, they make it. Would you, would good you, players make I it. Think, what you're saying, maybe it's more competitive here than anywhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I not more say, yeah, difficult because yeah, of life circumstances. Yeah, yeah, here, I would say, yeah, life circumstances. But I'm saying as, as a group, there's so many yeah. good kids. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, there's. I'm not saying there's not better kids in Africa, and there might be, but there'll be some there, some there, some there. I'm talking about yeah. all in London. Good kids, and they're good, all getting good and coaching. They're, and they're all in the same bubble. Yeah. But, but bringing it back to that question, I suppose what they're getting at is that... I forgot what the question was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with like, the guy is saying that he, he, his kid is living in a nice neighbourhood yeah so well, it, it, comes, it comes back to the same thing if the kid wants to make it it's a footballer it's up to him 
But yeah, I guess it's that the impact of the other friends. Maybe the other friends when when he his boy I assume it's a boy, it might have been a girl, but yeah, his kid is then saying, Oh, I want to practice football. And the other kid says, Now let's play computer games. And do you know what? I'll be I'll, I'll be more worried in, in a city. I'd be more worried there's more there's more what's name in a city when gangs are going to other kids. That's the problem. Not playing on machine. It's going to be when yeah. when kids and but there's something inherent with with growing up in that environment, like you said, that, that, that helps character. football. But Obviously, you, yeah, you'd it rather. It but you, you'll character. still be worried as a parent, wouldn't you? Hundred percent. You know, I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, but you see, what you see of that hunger and that desire. It's, it's all it comes down pitch, to. It. You see the way that they press the ball, the way that they approach their tackling. Is it not come through in the like mentality that they have? And I'm sure that's a contributing factor. I'm sure it is. Like the environment that you've grown up in and the the, the competition between the kids. Because I've coached like both both mm -hmm. kind of uh, maybe more affluent kids and kids in like inner city, city areas. And as a generalization, obviously it's not true 100 percent across the board. As a generalization, it's a lot more competitive between each other mates even and and to the point where it gets, gets very wiry, very tasty, tasty yeah with, with the inner city kids rather than the the more affluent areas that. but it'll be that's it, a generalization it, it, it'll be about, it's all about the individual kid if he wants them if he if he if he loves football that's what you need the kid has to love football if the kid yeah. don't love football and he's doing it for his mum or his dad yeah. or someone else it, it, that will fizzle out that one million percent yeah, that will one. fizzle yeah. number one is you yeah, have yeah, to love football yeah. you have to love football it's honestly if you don't love football mm -hmm. it will catch up with you yeah. in the end it because will catch up with you because one bad one bad bit of bad luck or one bad decision against he's you gone. yeah he's gone he's gone yeah. he's gone because he ain't got the love of the game you have to love football you have to that is so important do you think that environment where you've got everything you need and you, you're do you think that could influence could impact on how much you love and enjoy playing football every afternoon <sighs> Is it, is it, it's, a, it's a hard one you know I didn't I come from I come from you know I come from a council estate I come from like I was born in Holston and then I moved to North Fulton to a council estate so you know I had that but I never I never I love football I just love football I didn't ever like I'm going to be a footballer because I want to get out of here. I, didn't, I never ever I thought wanted that. I wanted to play football yeah. I did, when I started playing football I didn't know you got paid I used to watch match of the day. I thought you just played football. <laughs> you know, I'm seeing kids now and they're going, oh, and the worrying thing is they know the name of the car. They know. Uh, oh, again, you know. again, a famous quote from Hayes, and I, I will not say no names and I love them all. Um, but back in the day when I was coaching my team, there was a player who was getting rewarded financially if he was scoring goals. And I remember Hezzy clocking on because he must have heard maybe the mum or dad speak. Um, he came to be so perplexed like dad like why is so and so getting money for God doesn't he like scoring yeah that, that's, exactly. that's how he exactly. put it at, yeah, six, yeah, exactly. at six years old <laughs> that's he clever was like, six year doesn't old. he like I just want to hit the net I, I just love mm. that feeling that feeling I don't want anything for it like I mm. That is the reward. Yeah. Like, mm. And at that point, that was one of the key points on the way up till now. Obviously, I'm nowhere near the end. Um, but I knew he was genuinely into it. Yeah. No, it's clever six year old. <clears throat> Do you believe in football spirits that come from a higher power? For instance, who are players like R9, Messi, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, blessed with a gift from above? One million, gillion, zillion percent. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> so we're saying, like, we're, it, it's nature na nurture again I, is it not is but, but, but if you bring the question that's not the same sorry the question's gone now it is, it is. It is. It's it's it. higher power so spirit so what, what are, oh, we, I, I, are we saying I, we're not I, saying you're born with it no he's saying it's like religion no he's oh, saying really? is it not gift from God no higher power if though. it's gift yeah, from so God gift, or it's a gift it's a gift spirit from no it's not that one yeah nature and nature and nurture it's a gift from God it's a gift from God Sean what do you think Thing, so. Well, Sean, pose your question then, because you're derivative from that. <laughs> it says a higher power. <laughs> right. Do you believe in football spirits that come from a higher power? For instance, were players like R9, Messi, Renadino? So, yeah, give from God. So, so, so like, no, no matter what happens to them, 
they are on a par. No, they're the destined to be R nine. You know what? I, oh, he was sorry. I take, I take back with Ronaldo, <laughs> Man United Ronaldo. Yeah, I think. A lot of his was hard work as well. I think a lot of hard with Ronaldo. With Ronaldo, I think it was hard work. I, there's, oh, there's, he did work hard. Sorry, his <laughs> gift and all that. But I think he he's a prime example for every kid out there. You work and work and work, yeah. and you become the best. Because it was things like his his physique as well, like every part, yeah, every, every yeah. part of the game, yeah. he wanted to jump higher, yeah, to, exactly, to move faster. Yeah, to, it, it worked. He trained with ankle weights, didn't he? Yeah. And stuff like that. Like you know, you really... watch his story. I don't, you know, I don't see too many videos of him when he was younger beating twenty players. Basically, he was. He was good. Yeah. He was. I'm not, good. not saying he wasn't no, good. I mean, like, he's one of the great. He kept players denied. He was a dribbler. Yeah, yeah, and completely changed. That's what Rude Rude Van Nistelrooy was up. Set about at the beginning. Cross, it was like, when are you going to play the ball? Yeah. I go in, you jet back, you, I go back, you yeah. go for You genuinely like, think at under rate he wasn't like the best in his area? Uh, in his yeah, world. maybe. I, I yeah. hear he was. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear he was. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I, would, I mean, but I just I just think he works so hard today. Do you know what I mean? To stay where he is. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a difference between stay, in your area. I yeah, I, I, just, I just think he, he, like there's a Close. lot of hard work goes in. I, I love his dedication. I like, like my hardest part of my job if I've ever done in my job on Sky is criticising Ronaldo because he's like comes it's to United to and I don't an think they're to, gonna yeah. win anything with him in that's the hardest part I mean the bloke's one of the best players ever to play football he's one of the best finishers ever to play the game but I just think the others like he's 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 got that gift but he's worked hard. He's been given a bit of it and then he's, he's got the rest well, of it. Would it be fair to say he is obviously a talent, but his superpower is his drive? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would say so. I would say, and his love for football. He's addicted to football. That's obsessed. He's addicted to yeah. football. There's, that's what I'm saying about football. If you love the game, it's not the love; it's the addiction of well of loving it. So, where are some of the others that was mentioned? So, oh no, now? I think yeah, I think them are like they were more natural with it. Yeah, just the I just think theirs was more. Yeah, it was just, I mean, Messi, I can't, I can't watch it. Because he he's, he's done the same Mulally. training as his mate at school and and with everybody else. Why, why are they not the same as him? But I know Sean would argue it would be, was it due to the environment? That the yeah, but, it, but he, like he, he was at wherever he was at the start, at River Plate or wherever, at eight or seven or Boca Juniors, wherever he was, at seven and eight and nine and 10, 11, he was with them kids. Why weren't they better than him? Because of his size, he maybe had to think quicker, maybe had to play faster, had to adapt. And that's led parents. his parents. No, that, that's that's his parents. Listen, like let's say he was all right. Look at Mason um, when he when he did that L turn when he was eighteen months or whatever. Like he's had football and TV. He's been conditioning him from. Like, I know, but if you if you had another kid, the same thing. Is he going to be able to do exactly the same thing? You think? Do you know what? Like you know when you talk about nature and nurture, yeah. You know, you know, in football, there's there. Yeah. There's there, and then there's there, and then there's there, and then there's there for all kinds of players. Like them players up here are on a different planet. Of course. Like different, even like when you talk about Maldini and people like that, who was yeah. a defender who wasn't like our so-called great on the eye. They were they were like unbelievable he was pretty players. Classy for a defender, yeah, he was. Yeah, he, was. What? he was pretty classy. For oh, a he was defender. unbelievable. <laughs> he was like like. <laughs> Smooth it's honestly, <laughs> but his like, dad was a footballer. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. He was a footballer, no, but yeah, but that means like, you know, I see Freddie doing stuff on a pitch. Yeah, like he'll get into space and he'll turn, he'll go like that and ask for the ball, or he'll pass and then he'll move. He's kicking the ball with the outside of his left foot, like he just kicks it outside of his left foot. Naturally, I don't teach him that. I teach. I can't teach him to. You know. Yeah, but where was he before he started to get like, a lot of organised coaching? You remember? Yeah, no, yeah, I know. Well, the organised coaching and the passing and trying to stay on the ball, which, you know, he tries to do. But there's stuff that he, he does. And, I, and I'm like, this is what I mean about, I, like, he's seeing things. I see things. Like... But he put in, like, I don't know, it probably must have been a thousand, good two, three thousand hours of practice already by now. Yeah, but the stuff that we practice, that's not... That's not you can't you know it's you can't say to someone right just drop off and get into a bit. Why is not every other kid doing it? Because they are not doing three thousand hours of practice. 
I would say 3,000 hours of practice. I wouldn't oh, say loads of kids what about. Oh, I can pick things up at a different... Like, you can do... Oh. Yeah, but you like, do... Freddie can't do what other kids... Like, he couldn't do what Eden done. You know, like, do you know what I mean? He can't do what Eden does. Because what the practice that you personally... Because your beliefs on football and what you're practicing with Freddie... Yeah, that's coming Influence through. Yeah, see, my, that, but that's my worry because my I start to think now is... Was my way right? Was my way right? Because it's so dominant, dribble, dribble, dribble. Mm. And I never learned Freddie to dribble like that. I, I was like, whatever happens, if you keep on getting through, when you get to a certain age, you have to pass the ball. Well, I don't care what anybody says. You have to pass the ball. Look at Jack Grealish now. He's at, he's at, he's at Man City and he's just getting eaten up. Mm. Because at six years of age, he's been told, get that ball, beat everybody on the pitch, great, great. Then he gets into the first team, keep on giving Jack Grealish the ball, keep on giving him the ball, keep on giving him the ball. Now all of a sudden, he's been told he's got to pass the ball and he's like, I don't know. And I don't mean he can't pass the ball, but it's it's not natural. It's not like bang, bang, bang. It's... And so it's just what I see. I mean, I might be getting it horribly wrong. I got there's a kid called like Reggie at, at, who plays in my team. No one passes the ball like him. He's, he's eight years of age. He passes the ball. He sees things like on a pitch passing the ball. But will that be enough now? Like I'm looking, thinking they're not looking for that player. They're looking for someone who's who's going to be quick and strong, but has never got the same IQ as him in a million years, and will never have that IQ. But he he could get eaten up like Freddie could and Jew could, because they're not physically stronger than the other kids at the moment. And that's where I say, what are we looking at? And that's why we're not going to get a Jorginho. That's why the IQ, we're not looking for IQ footballers. We're looking for quick, strong dribblers. And I, don't, I haven't seen Edge, but, you know, he looks like he's breaking the mould. But that's one out of how many? But he will still have to be in a good team. He's got to be in a good team. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, I might be, I might be wrong. I, I, I start to, I start to worry of what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing, and that's why I go back to like, that's why I like Rob's thing because, you know, I couldn't agree more. I don't know where we're going to get that player from anymore. It's just a, it's like a money machine. It's like we're just making money when really we're not. We want to get these kids into the team. We want to win the World Cup. You know, we should be dominating. We have the biggest budget in the world. Exactly. Everybody wants so to play it. Any more so resources why? to produce players. But which, not... ironically, would bring more money. Like, if they won the World Cup. Yeah, like, of course. It, yeah. It, we don't need more money, though. We got, we got no, enough. No, but that's what I'm saying. But if they're so focused on money the, and they're the not Premier, producing the right players... The, the Premier League... They are producing is, players yeah. that are going to sell for big money. Yeah, yeah. Like and wingers... But, wingers and... I take that heads. back about... If my boy was a dribbler, I'd probably be saying the same. Do you know what I mean? So it's... I'm not being biased. I'm just... I'm looking... I know... But there is I, that I was, I was fortunate enough to play about here. Not there... Or there, but about here, like a good, good standard. I know what you got to be a footballer. Yeah. I know what you have to do. Yeah, you know, and that's what my philosophy is: keep on playing that way, and you see if you get through. But you can see them kids getting eaten up. Look at England's midfield with uh, oh, no. have, like Declan Rice, oh. and the fact that we celebrate this guy, he <laughs> hides from the ball. It's like it's it's mad that people wanted him sold for 150 million and wanted to buy it. Like people were like, yeah, let's get him, pay whatever it takes. He can't receive the ball. He doesn't want it. He can't receive it. And and because he's great in the duels, because he's built like a centre back, everyone loves him. Mm. And the priorities are wrong with all the people that watch football in England. For for a start yeah. uh, like like he, he is not a central midfielder he is not but, he but can't receive the ball go, going back to a point that I made a moment ago where it was talking about academies and then saying but we're never going to win a World Cup like that the, the remit for the Premier League academies is to produce footballers and no no produce a player not a footballer a player and a footballer are two completely different things produce, Glenn Oddall yeah was a footballer. Okay. Who, who can we say? 
Footballers and players are completely different. A footballer will see things, they're a, they're a footballer. A footballer <laughs> do things. A player is someone who will just go out and play football. So, so, do you know, okay. like, Glenn Oddle was, was a footballer. I know what Do you, you, you know what yeah. I mean? I, I, I'm trying to think okay. of players now off the top of my head, but it's not like that. The point, the point no, Mason Mount's a footballer. Right. In my opinion, he's a footballer. He gets on the half turn, he looks forward. Foden. He right. doesn't score goals. They're footballers. They're footballers. But the, the remit for Premier League academies is to make profit really but that's good then so we're like we're we're a market we're like no but that's exactly what it is that's what that's exactly what it is they're trying to produce a load of wingers they can sell so they can buy the Jorginho from abroad because they are never trying they're not even trying to produce that player and I'm not saying they're wrong because they are a business and they have to look after their own interests Mm -hmm. it has to be regulated or the FA need to or like what (laughs) I have no vested interest in generation football. I just really like what Matt's doing. But his idea, when he said it to me, he he said, I want to become an alternative academy to the Premier League academies. Like, because he doesn't believe they're producing these types of players. See, it's different at Chelsea and Fulham. Chelsea's get the ball, dribble, beat the world. Although, having said The difference is... I know, so change. But and then Fulham is just completely pass and move. Completely, is it? like extreme, like like completely. I, I, I mean, it's theory. It's like two it. different sports, if you know what yeah, I mean. I, but I don't know if that's sorry. To, no, I don't know if that's good. why Fulham have to go that way because they're not going to get the dribblers, so they go that way. I don't know. That might be the case. Is it not a direction from the club, or I don't. I don't know. Philosophy? I mean, you know, it, it could be. You know, it's hard. You know, this is Chelsea. You know, Chelsea against whoever is going to be hard to compete. So. You have to change your way up. I don't know, but Harvey Elliott plays for Liverpool now. Cavalio plays for, you know, no. no? no I'm only laughing because I'm a Liverpool fan. <laughs> so but he's I a good my, player, no? no there we go. Uh, <laughs> which one? Harvey Elliott. Yeah, I, I do believe he is a good player. Yeah, I, would, I don't I, think I don't you should it. start right now all the time. Well, that's a, no, high, that's, bar, that's, 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 that's a high bar. Yeah, yeah, that's a high bar. Yeah, very high bar. And I'm at 19. I am categorical. I've heard amazing things about Harv. I've heard amazing things about from people who knew him personally. Him coming up, I hear he's got an amazing like com- self confidence, not in an arrogant way, but in a way like you, that you need. Yeah, of course, to, yeah. to play at the top level, and obviously, I wish him all the best. And I always try my best to be obje- objective because I'm someone's parent. Do you know what I mean? And, and my son's trying to do his best to to make it. And I know there's times you still got to have opinions and that's fine and I will have them. Don't, don't so why, why is your opinion but, on it, Tim? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, my, as a Liverpool fan, I'm like, I don't think he's quite ready yet to, to step in because... But he had that phase of about three or four games when I think he should have been brought out there. He was Liverpool's best player. Yeah, and but I, I think that may have been through enthusiasm of getting in the team. And you know that kind of... When the team the team that gets selected every week has gone on a lull and they've started like not doing so well, they almost have this kind of thing of... like It's interesting to watch what's happening with Trent at the moment. Now he's been left out of England. He, uh, I think he started on the bench for us the other day. Like That hasn't happened for a long, long time. And there's sometimes where them players... Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know what it is because I'm not behind the scenes. But it looks like from outside. Well, I'm Kushti because uh, there's no one better than me in this team, so I'm going to get my place. And then you have the young bucks who are coming through, who will give their left arm to to play, and it comes through when they start even moving on the pitch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I think you might be being a little bit unfair on. Oh, really? I think to, to get into that Liverpool team at his age I'm not and be one of the best players, I'm not saying I think he's, he's a, I think he's a, he's a good footballer. I think he's got a good football brain. Mm-hmm. I think that's why he plays for Liverpool because he's been learned at a young age mm-hmm. what to do. Mm-hmm. I think if he was coming as a dribbler, I don't think he plays for Liverpool in a New York mm-hmm. minute. In my definitely opinion. not in central midfield. Yeah, I, he passes and moves, but he should have been out of the team. My worry with Trent Alexander, he's been playing that position six years now, and he still don't know how to defend. He does. He just, it's just concentration. He knows how to do it. He just doesn't concentrate. Well, that's a big worry then. Yeah, and, if and you're and not the concentrating at that age, and the, and the effort as yeah. well. Like, but he's, a be, he's one of the best passers in in, in the English game, ridiculous. in my opinion. So. And how he gets taken out, he I I would have him in it. I would go right. You play, 
and I'll get defenders around to cover you. Mm -hmm. That's what we don't do. It's all like... But, but we, when Canate was fit, the problem is he's been injured. He was covering for him and we were fine. Yeah. He was, he's so quick. But when he's out of team, Gomez is out of a nightmare. Um, Matip is brilliant, but he's not as quick as, as Canate. Yeah. And the, the spaces get exposed a little bit more without, without Canate. But... Yeah. Anyway, I think Trent, you can't move him into midfield though, because it's no. such a different skill set. Oh, yeah. Receiving the ball at that yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Receiving yeah. the ball yeah. in there is just completely different. You got a question for us, Musk? Yeah. <laughs> Are TV pundits good or bad for younger players to listen to? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Listen. <laughs> in what way? What are we talking? That was the question that was given through Instagram. What, right. Yeah, go on. Okay. Say it again. So I guess it? we've got to interpret ourselves. So it said, are TV pundits good for kids to listen yeah, to? Yeah, are TV like pundits good or to... bad for younger players to listen to? Maybe what they're trying to get at is should you try and encourage your child to listen to those pundits and watch the analysis as well as the match? And before we go into that, I do think a pundit has an impossible job. And I'll tell you why. Because someone like Merce has played... Yeah. yeah, so he knows got... everything that everyone is going through, you know, when they're having a good time, when they're in a bad yeah. time or whatever. But he's paid to give a, like almost a neutral opinion on it. And you can't do both. You, you can only, you have to you have to go one way or the other and it probably will do that. It'll probably sometimes be from their point of view and sometimes it'll be... You know, I've got my pundit hat on and I'm trying to be neutral. And most of the mistakes you're pointing out, you've made yourself. Like, oh, all yeah. of that. All of that. But that's what I was just saying. That Not was you, a but every pundit. Oh, you know what I mean? But that was a part what I just said to Tim just then about the RV Elliott one. I know how hard it is to play. He's playing in like one of the yeah, best teams absolutely. in the world of football. Absolutely. Yeah. Like on the biggest I'll stage. Say again. No, I'm just... And he's like, yeah, that, that, that's where I think some people like credit where credit's due for that kid to be playing at that oh. that standard of football no, he's, he's been, is, uh, uh, but he's been he's been well, up, well low on the list of our problems this, yeah. this year yeah but he's yeah. taught he's, been, he's like but he's been taught a certain way of yeah, playing yeah, yeah. and if he wasn't taught that way of playing at mm -hmm. Fulham mm -hmm. he doesn't play for Liverpool no. do you know what I mean do you, uh, do Hudson Odoi Hudson Odoi I'm not being wrong Hudson Odoi is not a, not a Liverpool is he no yeah I was going to ask: Do you do you watch with Hezzy? Do you watch? Let him watch the pundits and the analysis. Because okay. I trust I him. Me too. No, I, <laughs> when Mercer's on, we talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, but seriously, yeah. um, I listen to music. No, I, 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 I'll um, sing a song next time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'd watch that. Um, but yeah, I think um, uh, there is. This is just down to parenting styles in general, but. And I go off a feeling like there's no manual for parenting. Do you know what I mean, there's no blueprint um, that is exactly right. What I try to do is interject where I feel it's necessary and allow space where I feel it's necessary. So, for instance, listening to people, he is going to be at Chelsea one day and they've got the screens on while they're eating dinner. And whoever's, I don't know who's talking then. It could be anyone. Do you know what I mean? Whoever they've put on Sky at the time mm -hmm. or whatnot or BT or whatever. And he he's going to hear things that he's going to have to work out whether he agrees with or disagrees with. Mm -hmm. And if he ever comes to me and says, oh, dad, what do you think about this? Then we'll have a discussion about it. Some things I don't think are that deep. And also, I think that I've got to trust him as a person, because he's a human, as well as my son, or do you know what I mean? That he is able to work out some of life for himself. You know, it's a skill you need to have. Like, you're not always going to be mum and dad, dadded. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and whatever way. happens, if, if he plays f as many games it's going to be up and down. One minute you're going to be, the, you, you, of course you are, you're the high, you know, you're the main man the next minute you're not. Like Mason Mount was picked every week, the other week he didn't play. Yeah. You know, you have to take that, it's who reacts to the criticism best, who yes. takes it yes. or don't listen to it. Mm. But, you know, that, they're the ones, you know, you're not going to please every, as a player, mm. Half the people in the world will love you, and the other half can't stand you. I was always, even though they don't even know you, yeah, they yeah. don't, and that's the way. Uh, I was always taught you can please some of the people, some of the time, uh, never yeah, all the people. Exactly, the and soon, and if you, long as you know that, you'll be yeah, all right. But yeah, I think like my response to that question would be that 
it's dependent on the ages mm-hmm. because priority for younger kids is to be on a ball. And even to the maturity of them at that age, True. that's another one. Yeah, like, yeah, cause yeah. sometimes you can be eight with the, I remember famously when he went to Chelsea, uh, when he was about an under eight or under nine, maybe, I remember a, a coach coming over to me and saying, I'll be honest, when I'm with Hez, I have to catch my tongue because I think I'm um, like the way he talks and holds conversation. I feel I sometimes forget that I'm with an eight year old mm. and I feel like I'm with a 16 year old or something mm. where yeah, your banner would be totally different. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I guess maturity plays a part as well. I would say with the with watching the pundits, I don't think at half time or full time yeah. they, they're going to much depth anyway the only time you really do is like make it maybe a Monday night football when you've got an hour before the yeah, game yeah. Yeah. then you go into you, some but you wouldn't depth. believe we, we have, at half time we probably have three minutes yeah, 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 yeah. we've had yeah, yeah, the ball so, going so you're not going to learn you know, much either you, way no, in exactly. those little few minutes yeah. of and also like it's not going to make much difference and I mean, the best out of everybody used to be Terry Venables was it? Right. For me, it was the best. What, analysis? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Even like when I was playing and you'd watch him, you would learn. Like, and that's a compliment. You're yeah. playing and you still learn He the way he would say you've got to do that. I hear too many co commas they go, I've got to change it half time, but they don't tell you what I've got to change it to. <laughs> do you know what I mean? What have they got to change it to? And I think at, at the same time, this was my hesitance to come on the show because I'm not like trying to be out here winning awards for most humility in the world do you know what I mean or whatever but I'm doing the best I can with my family yeah. right and if people want to listen in obviously like I said we have a YouTube the Greenway family if anyone wants to check it out plug um, <laughs> but, but at the same time like we just put it people used to come to me often and say wow how do you do it you you still you still look, you look too young to have seven kids or, or whatever and all this kind of stuff and my response was I could probably show you better than I could tell you do you know what I mean so I just opened it up and that's what our YouTube is it's just general goings ons in a big family mm-hmm. and there's some fun times there's some sad times like when we lost twins and it like or we lost one of the twins twice um, you know, it, these things happen, but I wanted to open up an honest kind of window to our life that if anything you can relate to, you could just maybe take what you want out. Like, we ain't, mm. I ain't got to imp- yeah. impress it upon you, yeah. but if you want to come and pinch bits, be my guest, man, be my guest. Um, for, for me, in my opinion, you know, that is part of the reason why your children, and it's not just Hezzy being successful like he does, oh. um, you know, you've, you've currently... Girls are amazing, Rue's dog. Exactly, like, exactly, yeah. yeah. And so for, for me, you know, that's, you know, you and Ella, for what you're passing down to them. Big up, Ella. As a consequence, <laughs> Love you. you know, the, the, the children are, are doing well in their fields. Mm. Um that's that's me talking more of my little argument of environment but yeah, yeah. more yeah. you know the, the spirit stuff um, nature but anyway um, Marcelo go next question. two more questions go, two go. more Merce touched on it uh, earlier but I've noticed academies doing running races at the end <laughs> under eight training is this part of the assessment program and do you think it is right Merce uh, I don't think it's right in my opinion I don't think it's down to pace at the moment I think someone who's quick now might have developed a little bit quicker than someone else which doesn't mean that they're going to be quicker again I keep on going back to the same old thing you're better off being quick up here Mm. than quick down there from an early age from any age any any age I mean and that when we talk about all them players you talked about just now they're all quick up here the best is is Ronaldo is that doing a disservice to those coaches because just because they are getting them to do a running race it's not that they're saying okay that kid won the race so we're definitely going to sign them I didn't say that I didn't say that all right but what is like I I do agree that the coaches are doing fine jobs or whatever but what is the purpose of having a race I think that's the question what is the it's, purpose what are they gathering from do you not that? know do you not yeah, know who's yeah. the see I want you're with those kids three four times a week the, quick, you know the, quick, the, quick, the quickest the quickest player like, is the ones who shout on the pitch yeah, and you that's know. another thing it's a different kind of pace of course as well. it is because it, it's up here it's like you said so someone who if we go do a hundred meter sprint uh, we might um, have uh, I might be the quickest might be. Um, but if we went on a pitch and it was like about being effective in the game, you guys might be. It, it, I, I, I think 
that speed of thought is so important. You could be the quickest player in the world, yeah. But you need but you need to come off feet. the yeah. But you need to come off the pit. You got to use that on yeah, the pitch, yeah, effectively, effectively game, on yeah, the yeah, pitch. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. when you come off a pitch, whoever's the quickest player, you want people coming off the pitch going, he's quick. When you come off a pitch and they're not saying he's the quickest, that's where it's a worry. And I don't, I don't see why the races are. Why, why would you get a race? Yeah, that, that, why, is, why I, I want to isolate, isolate the question. Yeah, I want to isolate that question yeah. and like kind of call out any of the coaches that are doing it. Can anyone here think of any purpose for doing this? You know how quick, who's the quickest in your group? You have this group four times a week. You know who's is it, it really? No, yeah, you, no, you know. I think I think I've sat there. I know who's the quickest, and I, I I know who's the how quickest. How do you not know? Yeah. Not maybe not to the exact. Oh, he's he's going to do it in this time, and he's going to be half a second behind. Maybe not, but you know roughly how fast everyone is. What is the purpose? Roughly, but like you actually. What is the purpose? So, what are you trying to achieve? But to, to learn, like, who is actually the the best runner in the group? But very importantly, you know I feel it's it's, it's when you add a ball to it. That is a different race. Like yeah. so, for instance, Messi would cane a lot of people with a ball because a lot of people got these mad touches that they just do, and you can't just do that because people are there. <laughs> do you know what I mean? A race when you haven't got no one ahead of you, we're just sprinting literally. Yeah, well, like you know, you, you majority of the game is actually about the ball. So recovery. So what are they trying to achieve? So they want to learn more about their players and and learn more about the group and make sure they have got a balanced group. And so, if so, someone, do you think any of those struggling? Do you, do you if someone think, is struggling on the ball, but they're winning that race. Now you're thinking, okay, let's give them a little bit more time. Do they take data from the races? I don't think they do. I think they might probably get to that. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. So say that again, Sean. So the quickest one, they might be struggling on the ball, but because they're the quickest, they go. Oh, we'll give them. We'll time. give them time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So the player who's not the quickest, but he's really good on the ball, won't be given time because he ain't going to become quicker. Also, what about if you know you're one thing? You hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, 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 hold on. What if you're that you know everyone knows you're the slowest in the group? Yeah, and <laughs> you'll say, "Let's have a race." Oh, great! Cheers. Football, like everyone. Football, football is football, <laughs> but it's not football. It's not football. It's running in a straight line. Football is cruel. Football is cruel. Yeah, but you're doing that, to, you're doing that to an eight-year-old kid. He wants to What's come and point? enjoy the ball and enjoy playing, and you're making him race knowing that he's the slowest in front of all the if players. If there was a good point, point, that's an interesting Let me point. know. If there was a good I, point, I don't know if that sits know. well no. with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but that's, no that's, that's interesting. No I don't know to it. that point. Like, yeah, to, to, to the point that you made there, where you said that, yes, there's that, um, I suppose that they're looking at, they're taking into account the player that runs well, maybe not so good on the ball, um, but they want to give more time there. You said if it's the other way around, they wouldn't give time. I didn't say, I, no, I said, would would they give time? Oh, yeah, he asked. Yeah, okay. yeah, sorry. And yeah. I think, yeah, because the enthusiasm was wrong, they didn't get yeah, a chance to answer. That's right. Go, Sean. <laughs> Your time. Um, no, it's good how much passion we've got in the room. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I if, if that player is unbelievable technically, um, and not moving the best, they are. They would give them more time. They would, um, and that time would only go so far. I think if they were really concerned about a player's mobility in the future, that they wouldn't be able to play Premier League football. But Jorginho can't run. Jorginho won't be in the. He would be. He'd be the slowest in the whole of the Chelsea team. Thiago. Thiago, when he gets in a race, is a, he gets absolutely roasted. So yeah, but he's thirty-seven now. He's 31. No, not Thiago Silva. Oh, Thiago sorry, Liverpool. sorry. I was going to say, <laughs> Thiago he was Liverpool. like a greatest defender of one no, of the no, greatest. No, no. Yeah. Thiago in the midfield at exactly. Liverpool. If he gets so isolated, he's in trouble. Yeah, but they, they, they don't. And that's that's the thing. I don't, I don't... We go back to again where you said straight... Pace. You said it without meaning to say it, but you went, oh, if they're quick and they're not good, they'll get more of a chance because they're quicker. Like Thierry Henry, when he first came into the Premier League. No, when he was at Juventus, he was rawer on the ball than when he started working with Wenger, no? I, he was at Juventus. He was decent. He was playing for France. Yeah, really right. he, he, yeah, yeah. That, that league was harder than you the know. He, you know he, is, he is a player, prime example of any player that's quick, yeah? Him and Michael Owen... Are, you would always say how lightning that they use their pace to the Fair absolute advantage. Yeah. advantage. So the pace was an attribute for them. Massive. It, yeah, massively. So it can be an attribute in football. No one said of it's an attribute. It but, but it's races alone for young kids, I don't see what they're trying I to do. I think in England now, I think in academies now, we are 
pace, 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 pace. If you can't run, I don't think you have a chance. I don't think any of us are saying don't consider pace as an attribute. No, yeah, I, I, think, would have I think you need. Have yeah, pace. Oh, you've got to have, you've got to have pace. pace. You've got to have pace. Yeah. It's as simple as I that. Mean, you have. No one is saying that, but mm. that is that is a bit much for me. Just doing a running race. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Final Brutal. question. Brutal. Fi final question. If you could guarantee that your child would be a top Premier League player, but in exchange you would get your leg bitten off by a lion on your 80th birthday, would you do it? Note that it would be extraordinary pain and you would lose your leg. So at 80 years of age? 80. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, of course. <laughs> at 80? Well, I won't really leave my legs at 80, will I? Do you know what I mean? Not like I'm going to be going running or playing football. I mean, I could, uh, yeah, I could swallow one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for that, like, so it, the lion, it is, yes. honestly, these kids, if any kids listen, this is the ultimate job in the whole world. It is, honestly, there's no better buzz than playing in front of 50,000 people, scoring a goal or defending a keeping clean sheets honestly anybody listening to this it's the absolute ultimate you know and these kids all these kids who are listening to this because that means they can play because they're not listening to it if they're you know mm -hmm. if they can't play they have a chance the biggest chance I know they're only seven and eight they might be nine or ten eleven it starts now. I don't care what anybody says. It starts now. Not when they're 17 and they might get a chance in the first team. It starts like now. You know, I would. I would. For my boy to live, <laughs> right, for my boy to be a professional footballer, I, I, yeah, 100%. Well, I'm 80. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, if you said to me, I live to 80, I'll be giving you a kiss. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Seriously. Uh, one Seriously. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? It's all good. All good. It's all good. Oh, yeah, I, I don't like to bring sort of energy off like sort of negativity things like that. But yeah, I think that I think maybe what the question is kind of bringing out is that parents do give a lot of sacrifice. They give everything. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I don't think people realise. I, I had a, my youngest boy of three. My my older boy is the youngest one out of them three. Was a good footballer. Really good footballer. Really good. I went to Aston Villa. Me and his mum got divorced, and I moved to Villa. <laughs> So I wasn't down in London enough to take him to football. And, he and that's why he never result. made a footballer. That's the reason. That's the only reason, in my opinion. Point. And that is why, <laughs> with the parents, it's so important. But my thing to the parents would be, let the coaches coach the kids. That's their job. When they come out and you go in the garden... You don't see one of the Chelsea coaches or Fulham coaches leaning over the fence, butting into what you're doing. So let them coach. That's their job. But and my other hand would be to the coaches, solve the problems. My teacher, teachers have to solve them. So you solve them. Yeah, I think that's a club directive, though. Like, so from my own experience, I think the clubs tell you don't don't help them them uh, with decision making. Let them solve their own problems. And I I couldn't disagree more with it. I think it's. It's yeah. nonsense, but it is coming from the clubs, I think, rather than the coaches. You're Even more, if the coaches agree, they don't get that option. Yeah. You, so. You're more of an autocratic teacher. Jeez. Oh, good to word, sure, whatever, whatever that means. means. Yeah. Whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> so for all the younger listeners, hey, listeners, go grab your dictionaries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> It is, it's so it's, they have these kids have, have such an opportunity. The coaching, like getting, I just don't think they understand. You know, I said on on before, and someone cut it up, and I said, oh, if you're if you're not in an academy by twelve years of age, you're not going to make it as a footballer. And like, but a lot of people shot me down, but they won't. No, the, the scouting networks are too wide it's now. Too wide. They too might, there, might, there might be a kid. Too many hours they do. There might be a kid at thirteen years of age who's literally gone to like mm -hmm. Tim's height mm -hmm. at 13 mm -hmm. who's going to be stronger and quicker than might get into the academy because of his strength and everything but at 16 years of age he'll be eaten up again because mm -hmm. of the quality and everybody else will get to his size but it's so important these kids don't realise how lucky they are I, I, honestly I never had all this it's when I played blessing. it is it, you, it you is. could not catch your breath I mean the training they get you know I watched the training I I wouldn't moan if I was a player now and I was training as an adult, <laughs> the training they're doing. The facilities as well. And the facilities. I mean, the pitches. Freddie played at Chelsea the other week on the pitch and I took my dad. I never played on a pitch like that in my mm. whole career. And I played at Highbury, which was the best pitch. And it wasn't good as that. It wasn't yeah. as good as that. And I played at Wembley. It wasn't as good as that. And they're playing on them now. Yeah. 
it's funny. I was standing on on Cobham pitches and I was just looking. I was like, "What that, is it? Like, give man, me a ball." Oh yeah, I'm like, yeah I'm do you know what I mean? This is oh amazing. But I don't know if they do realise. I think the kids just take it. Well, how are you going to? You've got nothing to compare it to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we're out questions. Done. I hope everyone enjoyed that. Oh, it really it's not if we enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> People listening. Uh, nice one, guys. Thanks, everyone. And yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah cheers. We'll get another episode out soon.